Well, hello. Hello. It's final box editing. Final box editing just go live. I think they. What? That's rude. <laughs> Freaking rude, man. All right. Okay. We're ready, set, and we're good to go. That's good. Okay. Time of games is nigh. Game time. Game time. I got that. And go. Yeah, you're so so much <laughs> with this. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started because I I know um, Bindus may be going to sleep soon, so I don't know if he wants to catch the first few. Uh, but well, here we go. Lily, the teacher shouted, I jolted from my slumber to find myself once again. In Miss Anderson's world history class with the teacher in question. Standing over my desk. Um, I don't know if in question is super necessary. With. I would almost name her like Miss, you know. Like this and take out once again in world history class. She glared at me as I wiped up the little amount of drool hanging from my mouth. I heard several snickers from my classmates as I sat up and tried to clear my head from the fog of sleep. So, Lily, since you seem to think my class is easy enough to sleep through, do you want to do her yeah. mean teacher voice? So, Lily. Since you think that my class is easy enough to sleep through, why were the ancient Mesopotamians <sighs> able to survive as long as they did? Uh, I, since I've been sleeping, therefore I'm paying attention. I didn't know the answer to that question. This is a great note. So this is good interiority, but it is extra interiority. Um, usually interiority is a lot like voiceover in film. You usually – you can use it more – liberally in novels, but if something is already implied by the context of the scene, you can go ahead and save yourself a couple of words. Um, this is a lesson I've been learning recently. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Anderson took my vague expression, open mouth, and ticked. This speech is you, weak people, so you will not sleep in my class unless you can recite the textbook from memory, front to back cover. Oof, that's cruel. Yeah. Rude. Cruel oh, indeed. Here, let's group this over here so we can still see chat. Good. She shouted as she walked back to her desk. Found her out again as she decided to call on some other unfortunate soul sitting in her. Anderson isn't there. Oh, anything important the day before spring break? Hmm. I would, uh, I would just clarify um, that here. Um, consider clarifying um, what important means to give a big assignment is what I'm assuming. But it could be a pop quiz. Uh, it could be, you know, new material. Uh, anything that that uh, and that's why you need a reader, right, to take a look at it. It's like if there's a, some things with multiple things that the reader could take away and they may not be sure. Uh, it's always worth clarifying, being as concrete and specific as possible. Let's see. I to survive her class, then it was smooth sailing through lunch in my other three hours. Luckily, the bell suddenly rang. Rush. Is it coming back there? Luckily, the bell suddenly rang, signaling a rush. Yeah. The lunchroom. Just more importantly, out of Miss Anderson's classroom. Read chapters 14 and 16 for homework over the break. Mm -hmm. Babe? Oh, it's okay. oh, here. <laughs> it's in my butt. <laughs> She shouted to the flood of kids leaving her classroom. 
Yeah, like that's gonna happen. I quickly stop on my locker on the way to the lunchroom to grab my lunch. As I did so, I glanced in the mirror located on the interior of my locker door. Hi. I was still boring brown eyes, brown haired me, just another junior slogging her way through high school. About five eight, so I was just barely taller than the locker itself. Sounds like me. <laughs> me in high school. Played my locker and walked over to the lunchroom, vying to through before the thousands of other teens did. I managed to extract myself from the mass of people. Oh, sorry, did you have another? Um, well, one, I was going to say, that's this is good interiority here. So this is a reported thought that changes how I see her statement to read 14. Uh, so this is a good time to get into the character's thoughts. Um, add that to the dictionary. All right. Um, the other thing is whenever you have a character, especially an eye character, looking in the mirror to give us the – so you're – you're thinking in the right vein, right? Like you want us, the reader, to kind of get a sense for what the eye character looks like. Um, but the mirror is one of the most heavily used ways to give us a view of a character. As they look in the mirror and blah. Um, so one thing to consider is, is you know, finding it maybe a, a different way to kind of give this information. So maybe... She compares herself to someone beautiful mm -hmm. or someone that she thinks is beautiful. Those are really effective tools, right? Because a mirror is just that. You know, it's one, it's been really heavily used, so it kind of smacks a little bit of cliche. But then also, it's all you're really getting is just the character's view of themselves. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways for an eye character to self-describe is by comparing themselves to someone else. That's usually how people do it anyways. Or, or, or you know... Um, Thinking about a boy and being like, he doesn't like short people. He doesn't like people with brown hair. He always goes after blonde girls. He's five eight tall. Like yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, whatever that whatever that means. So, um, um, mirrors are a bit heavily used. Um, some of this info we might not need as much of. Um, but the I look data. Um, I had a question about the sub edit 10 pages via Word, double spaced, 12 point times new Roman. Um, that is usually a, about the edit. Um, but, uh, Katerina, if you want, send us, you can send us more, uh, and then we'll, uh, usually, uh, if, if it's really good at page 10, we'll try to keep going. Um, so that's kind of our, like, page 10 is usually our, like, okay, here we are. What mm -hmm. do we think? Mm -hmm. uh, but then if it's good, we'll keep reading usually for another 10 or 15 pages. So feel free to add more. Some of this info I need, but um, I fix data is good. Um, perhaps give us this info through comparison. Someone she thinks is more beautiful. Etc. All right, sigh. Yeah, so great. Love the one-word sentences. Those are usually very evocative. Use them sparingly, uh, and it looks like you are like you know maybe once per chapter, twice per chapter, unless it's like a thing, like a, like an instrument you're using. Um, but yeah, there can be very powerful. Um, you have the original stuff I sent. A good current draft. Okay, so I shouldn't. So I, sh I I think I have your um I think I have your stuff is it indistinct aurora I think well anyways we can uh, yeah just uh, send me and just uh, whatever you want to read and there's no time limit um, so even if it's past this month you know so, uh, feel free to just uh, send it whenever. Mm -hmm. Um, greetings, I said. Oh, oh yeah. I just uh, myself. I smell this on my phone. Do not do the edit on it yet. Okay, cool. Mary already there, eating lunch from home like me. I had a few other friends, but they had all ditched school early to go on vacation. Greetings, I said, sitting down across from her. Where do you want to be? You'll be. You can be. Let's see. You'll be greeting. Oh, uh, so I'm gonna be the the I. 
Greetings, I said, sitting across from her. Hey, girl, how's it going? How fun was it to be in Miss Anderson's class the day before break? Mary spurted, smiling at me. Mary is a warm, bubbly voice that never fails to make me smile. Um, so one thing uh, to, to consider uh, is dialogue tags. Uh, your English teacher says you need them, but, rea uh, but uh, most of the time you actually don't. So I see you did a great job of cutting out the dialogue tag here. But one cool hack is that you can still suggest who's talking, but by just adding some context. So you can just do, Mary smiled at me. I still have the association of the dialogue with Mary, so it kind of feels like I have a tag. But then I'm shortening the follow-up. It's going straight to, to action. So that's a helpful um workaround I've found for having to not have Jeff said, you know, Danielle said, Jeff said, Danielle said, for every sentence. Or, oh, I see you. I smiled back and replied. Or, so I can be like, you know, we already have smiled, so I'll just be like, I, I just I smiled. I smiled. Horrible. Yeah. Alright, just my smile back, maybe. Horrible. Miss Anderson caught me sleeping. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. I know it can be rough. She was my least favorite advanced placement teacher last year. I rolled my eyes and laughed. Mary could be such a nerd sometimes. She had a 3.95 GPA, and that was with four AP classes, too. But Mary wasn't all nerd. She was also co-captain of the cheerleading squad this year. Mary was all around gorgeous, too. Blonde hairs and blue eyes and about a head taller than me. So great. So, we, so you already kind of have this really fantastic setup for this comparative description. Um, so I would maybe consider pulling that description out from up above and making this kind of, um, because it gives that conflict, you know, it, it shows us a lot more of both how the characters see each other through comparison. Also, dang, is this girl six feet tall? Head taller than me? Yeah. Wow. She's like an Amazon. What am I doing with this one? I gotta go meet her. <laughs> <laughs> you want the really tall ones. <laughs> get the shortness out. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. Um Do you have any homework over break? I asked Curious as they pulled out a sandwich from my lunchbox. I have a lot, like an entire truck full. Isn't it? Oh, also, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Something I try not to do is to say the curiously. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I'm trying to do that in my writing. <laughs> yeah, and you can even take out asked. Uh, I think this is another time where this dialogue tag may be just slowing you down. Uh, I So sometimes even in, in edits, I'll just kind of comment up top and then do it. Like once I say it once, I won't always say it again. But um, but that's another. So one, Fox is totally right. Pull out the adverbs from the dialogue tags if you can. Uh, but then, yeah, I still think you do such a great job. Like, do you still have my homework? Do you have any homework over break? I pulled out my lunch sandwich from my lunchbox like that. I know who's talking. Yeah. I have a lot. Like an, Oh, sorry, it's you. I have a lot. Like an entire truck full. I swear some teachers think that they're the only teacher giving homework out over break. And they feel <sighs> obligated to crush us with homework. How about you? That's, you know, Fox's note. Like a lot of these clarifiers. Um, trust your reader. It's coming across really well. And the way and your so your dialogue is really good. Trust your dialogue. Um, you don't always, you know, that exasperation is coming through already. Uh, well, the only homework I have is from my sandwich. I needed to know something to come. Our two boys were staring at us again. Matt, the varsity quarterback, and Chase, <laughs> his sidekick, also on the football team. I sighed and turned back to Mary. Yes, that's you. Guess who's taking an interest in you again? I whispered, rolling out my rolling my eyes. Groan. Are you saying something? Huh? Were you saying something? No, 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 you're good. Groan. I wish those two would just leave us to our meal and. So you've had a rolling, like a smiled and smiled back. If, if this is something you're trying to do to show, well, I think you you had a really good one where she smiled, like you know the pretty girl smile, and then the 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 main character smiles back. I would, and then you have it inverted here. I wonder you could either build on it and like you know having 
the girl who is the narrator be kind of the one that's imitating her. Uh, that would be actually kind of interesting. But I, I would probably – you I would figure out either to have like the smile, smile back, eye rolls, eye roll back. Either make it build where like we can see that she, one is imitating the other uh, or maybe just only have it once or twice. Um, consider doing the main character consistently imitate the pretty girl or um, here's an idea on the count of one of three we both turn and wave at them I smirked, almost easy, Mary. You and I both know that Matt thinks that he deserves me, so let's not encourage that behavior. I would just say she shook her head. See, this is where... This is where, like, the dialogue tags just aren't super necessary. And you just uh, have a period here. Oh, well, something happened. I thought that everything changed. Pay attention back to the boys. Who are currently whispering back and forth, glancing in our direction. Hide. They're both elitist jocks who thought they ran this people worship up, but others, like Mary and I, purely ignored them. I went back to chatting with Mary, discussing the latest high school gossip. Then, after a little while, I was very lazily interrupted by Matt. He crashed down noisily on the other side of us, chased by me and Matt by Mary. Yes, Mary asked politely through gritted teeth. Well, we were wondering if you girls. When am I going to prom with us? I've had so many offers, but you two are special to me. Matt said, sliding closer to Mary. I balled my fist on the table, wanting to punch Matt's lights out. No, thank you. Lily and I were actually... Oh, I finally know the main character's name. Yay! Lily and I were actually going to hang out prom night. Maybe see a movie. Mary replied, glaring at Matt and scooting away from these encroachment. Chase beside me was also trying to get a little more than his fair share of my space. So I elbowed him rather than hard in the ribs. He made a slight oof and keeled over. I smiled insincerely at Matt and got a glare from him. So I, I'm starting to wonder what the main character's kind of goal is. Because uh, to some degree, uh, she seems to be jealous of the attention that... Uh, or she at least calls very focused attention to the attention that this... Pretty girl is getting. So there seems to be jealousy there. Um, but then... <clears throat> but then she kind of... You know... Doesn't even pursue Chase. Uh, but I'm... You know, I think thinking about what she wants. Does she want to get all A's? Does she want to go to a red college? That'll help. Because then we can start blocking what's, what that is going to be. What does Lily want? Um, well, we really meant by asking you to prom is that you'll be our prom dates. It wouldn't do well for a varsity quarterback and his best friend to go without partners, would it? Mary grinned at us. Matt, grin. Matt grinned at us as he and Chase stood up. The girl was one of, the grin was one of a cat's sly and devious, almost evil. Oh, and if you don't, we will make your remaining time at Central High living hell. Just a thought. Matt said he after thought. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah, I see. That's right. I wanted to, to knock him out, lock him in jail, and throw away the key. I hate his guts with a fiery passion. I feel the same way, I replied, looking over past Mary to glare at Matt. Besides, this isn't blackmail. Isn't this blackmail? Mary sighed, not legally. It would constitute a threat. But Matt, being a star quarterback and all, the principal would just slap him on the wrist and send him away with a warning. And that would make our lives even more of a living hell, as Matt so tastefully put it. And what choice do we have? I hate the idea of being Matt and Chase as a plaything. Only for a single night. And I feel like with Matt's connections, he could actually make our lives miserable. Might be our only option, as much as I hate that thought. 
and her eyes brightened and she said, Well, if they are expecting us to go to prom with them, we can always stand them up. We'll have to Switzerland or something. Seriously, since they're being such jerks about this whole process, we just hang out downtown for the night, then they'd be embarrassed to go to prom without dates. There is that small matter of living hell. So, if they, like, you know, don't report these guys, that's there, there should be probably a pretty good reasoning. Maybe they're just high schoolers and, and they don't have uh, as much of, like, the context, but, like... something but maybe they're like f this we're not getting pushed around we're going to dominate them like and so maybe they have some like crazy plan and maybe that's what what's going to come but um but that would be like a great goal right um I mean, come on we've been through tough things together before we can survive being at the wrath of one very annoying boy and his sidekick. That's one thing I will never be able to deny, she replied, sticking her tongue out at me, and put my hand up, flat palm towards her, her smile widened. My hand up? Uh, is that a uh, high five? I think it's, they put their hand... Like this? Together? Together. <laughs> that can be awkward around the table. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> then the bell rang, released ourselves to the embrace and lunch boxes. See you, I shouted back as we parted ways. I went up to the nearby flight of stairs, my math class relief washing over me. They saw... Yeah, she still doesn't really have a, a goal. She's still just mm -hmm. kind of like going along with the flow. Yeah, I agree. I would, I would at least come out... So, even at the point where... Um... Where they are, where... You know, we're just getting to know the characters. She should still want something. Maybe she just wants to go home and finish her, you know, Miss Anderson's homework, you know. Uh, and then these boys interrupt that goal, right? So it's all about the goal and the obstacle. So and it, they can be small. They don't have to have big plot goals. They could just be like, I just want to go home, finish my damn homework. Uh, and then all of a sudden these boys come up and totally ruin that. Uh, and then, you know, now the revised goal is like, okay, well, when we go and let's do our homework together. And then when we go do our homework, we're going to go find a way to, to ruin these guys freaking lives for messing with us. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so you're kind of looking for this obstacle revised goal, obstacle revised goal, obstacle mm -hmm. revised goal. Uh, and, and it can be very small. And usually before you start a scene, even if you're not an outliner, even if you kind of write by the seat of your pants, it's always a good idea just to write. What does my character want in this scene? Just take one word, which is a glass of water. And then on her way to the and, – and that's a great way to get a lot of exposition over. Like maybe she finishes a run and she's really thirsty uh, and then everybody's talking to her and like the water fountain's right there. And she's like, just, yeah, you know. Uh, it but, makes it more interesting to read than just kind of like, and she went to class, this was happening. And I, I, I think that's that's something that I've struggled mm -hmm. with too. It's like being able to – make the character less passive and just have the things happen to them. Um, to have them be actively trying for something makes you mm -hmm. want to know more about them, makes you root for them. When the obstacle come up, you care, whereas, like, they're already just sitting in class, get called on. That sucks, but, you know, they don't want anything anyway, so who cares? Boys out the mouth. Doesn't like that doesn't want anything anyway. Like, you don't know what she wants, so you can't really care about what she doesn't like or want. Yeah, that's very true. It's it's hard for us as the reader to see why these, you know, because at first, you know, because we weren't super clear on what she wanted, we were like, oh, I at least was like, oh, that's good. These boys are going to ask her out. That's congratulations. Uh, and it was only then that, like, you know, it was it was had such a negative uh, like once we kind of saw how they acted um so the way to set that up even stronger is to you know have them also interrupt her from something really unhinge her day like maybe she has to run home who knows um 
or maybe she likes another like di- different types of boys like maybe she really mm-hmm. wants like one of the the nerdy boys to ask her out but only these boys can only the jocks her. yeah only the jocks that's a, yeah it's a great or something yeah i think that's a fantastic example no way, I don't get to do math homework. Was her else was pretty good. Movie was boring. Didn't have to do anything. I was dozing off. So much my back. Yes. Yeah, and like other okay. probably it was almost like Oh, Haley, I wonder if you want to go to my party this weekend. Katie whispered. Katie said, "Whisper shouting." I thought for a moment. I mean, why not? I could always leave if I didn't want to be there. Sure, I think I could get my grandfather to agree to it. What's the date and time? Two nights after prom at seven. Katie said, looking down at her phone, remember my house is right. Yes, I replied. Katie and I got together at her house for a group math project. Can I invite Mary along too? What? Oh, sure. Distracted by her phone. I really have nothing else to do over break, so maybe Mary and I could go to something fun after standing Matt and Chase up for prom night. Cool. Um, so that's good. Like we have this goal of them standing up. They have the plan. Uh, but I don't, um, I would also think that even in this little tiny scene, uh, there, sh- I think one of the, you should be looking to get a goal in here too. So like this plan to screw over the guys, I want to see some obstacles here. Maybe they hear that. The girls are planning on standing them up. You know, who knows? Um, or even just like, it just seems easy. Like the conversation itself is just like, oh, do you want to come? Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. It could be like, oh, crap, it's, you know, my grandfather's birthday that night. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not sure if he'll agree to it. Like, when is it? Okay, I'll try. And that sets up future conflict, like, even if it's not going to play into the prom or if it's something separate. Or, in that same vein, what if Katie invites someone else, and she overhears and grows jealous? Um, You know, those are the types of things that can, you know... It just makes it more interesting to read. It's Mm -hmm. it's not like... that's. I feel like that's a perfectly normal conversation to have in real life. Like, I think this is very well written as far as, like, you know, what happens in real life. But it's less... Like, that's why we write. (laughs) It's usually, like, more... There, well, and I think there's drama in real life, too, but I think you want to, like, make it more, have, have more yeah. going on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's exactly like Danielle was saying, right? It's like it, it, so much of drama is finding, like, the the worst or best days of your life. Mm-hmm. So, you know, an average day, um, and, and it's just, I think it's just that sense of easiness. The the mm-hmm. most important thing to say to your characters is no. You want this? No. Uh, and if you watch the, the shows that do this really well, uh, I think a great, you know, great example is um, Stranger, Things. Stranger Things. And th- that's in the same genre, which is this high school kind of genre. You know, the kids want to go out to a party. Mom says no. And then he tries to, like, say something sneaky. And then the girl's mad at him for sabotaging her want to go to the party. So then she sabotages his want to go into Billy's house or whatever and play D and D. So like the the it's all like these chains of like people not getting what they want and then screwing over someone else and then them not getting what they want and then it's like it's it builds that tension. Like, yeah. A uh, long time to see, really long time, like a whole three hours. So So the so this is a great time saying no. Or have Mary be like, I wasn't invited. Yeah. Like, Oops. I'm not going. Like I don't know if I wasn't invited. Yeah, I mean, one thing is, like, Mary kind of is going along. So every character so far, except for the two boys who kind of have faded out very quickly, have been just agreeing and saying, yep, let's do that. Okay, cool, let's do this. 
Um, so that, you know, while that probably would happen in real life, you want to inject uncertainty into your story. And if everyone is saying yes, it will feel very safe. Like you'll be like, okay, well, I guess they're going to do this now. Um, if you think about like any of the best stories around, there's uncertain, they're made good because there's uncertainty. And I think there's like, there's nothing wrong with, with everybody agreeing. It's just, it's not going to like, it's not going to suck people in. People want to know how it's going to turn out. If there's that uncertainty, they want to know, is she going to, is she going to make it to that party? Is, are she and Mary going to be okay? And that's what keeps you invested in the characters. I agree. And I think one thing that you could start really considering is how, what are the stakes of Mary and Lily's relationship? What are the problems? Where do they get along? We can crack the door open too. Oh, oh you're going to get the vape? Oh, it you. fell somewhere in my butt. Yep. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh, I'm a little bit behind on comments. Oh, oh no. back to writing. Oh, we're caught up. Yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Good night. Well, yeah, I think I think everybody's off to bed. That's why we have the recordings. Indeed. Yes. We have to do these. Yeah, I know. Everyone, everyone doesn't, yeah, no one believes us anymore when we say we're going to do an I edit. Know. Like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was five or six people on earlier, but... Well, what do you what do you want to do anything else over break? Any movies you've been dying to see? Really, we can always find something interesting to do. I mean, Seattle should have something to offer us, right? Mary but, teased. I'd rather think that. Up. Sure, it does. Matt started walking quickly. Came up behind Mary, slapped her butt. Mary's former momentum combined with Matt's horribly rude action caused Mary to spin around and fall flat on her butt. I stood there, spin around, and let's be careful because the, the butt is repeated, so I um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it could also just be like a different phrasing, right? So it could be like, uh, this is like stumble and spit off and his couple and friends. If that was who I think it was, I'm gonna kill him slowly. Um so like I guess uh you know it's a very antagonist move move but um the reaction really isn't there they just watch and remain passive i wonder if this could be an excuse excuse for a big sabotage on these jerks Yep, there's a certain no good elitist jockeying Matt who just assaulted you. Well, his intentions are quite clear, and I'm not joking about murdering him one of these days, I swear. That was raining cats and dogs. Um, be careful for kind of cliches like this. Well, I like, I like piano. pianos. I mean, it was really expecting it to be a clear day. Yeah, I guess that's fine, because it's coming from the character's voice. Seattle isn't called the rainy city for nothing. Luckily, Mary and I were well prepared for any weather. We whipped our umbrellas and walked to the street. I think that's another place you could throw in some uncertainty. They could be like, well, crap, and we don't have our umbrellas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like everything is working out really well. Except for the boys. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Back to the hill, but in my haste. Didn't realize it was only the flood waters going the hill, flooded my shoes, making my socks wet. Grown, oh, yeah. This my nose violently. Try to find a new pathway. Shirt grown and pick myself up. So she trips and falls and smacks her nose. My clothes once wet seem to never dry. I don't have waterproof shoes. Snapping back to the crescent. Um, so this is interesting. So I, I don't think you need snapping back to the present because we kind of imply that um, um, uh, this makes the reader ask why is she poor her family doesn't care um, whatever the reason you tell us about the character more yeah we should also get some hints about it earlier. I.e. I can't go to the to the party as my grandpa um, bus pass expired. Whatever. If it's financial, like let's say he doesn't have enough money. She did say she lived in the cheaper side of town. It's true. So maybe. I got up, I noticed something in the gutter. I'll go to the fold, back into the gutter. I'll the Load up and brush the leaves off the object in question. Inside the Small gold coin. I didn't really care about. The dad is a slick guy. Very good with the ladies. And myself. Left, just gone. And to the so this is interesting backstory, but I wonder if we can get it. So one, the gold coin seems very fortuitous. Um, um, how can the hero earn something like this? Maybe she sees a glint of gold, but the two jerk boys are standing in front of it and don't notice. Now she has to trick them into leaving so she can investigate. You know, those are the types of things that can, you know, make earning this coin, and I assume it's going to be something important. Very powerful. Uh, this backstory is good. It kind of shows us why she hates these guys. Yeah. Um, but probably can get dripped in earlier. Why not mention how these jerk boys remind her of her slick father or, you know, um, or just wait to deliver its backstory until it can form the present scene. So, I mean, this does inform the present scene in some degree because it tells us, well, this is who this character is. But, you know, one of the best examples of flashbacks that I ever read was in, um, was in, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old man his daughter was getting married <laughs> <laughs> I hear these a lot <laughs> I'm in trouble no that's actually <laughs> pretty awesome do you mind cracking it open though I'm like dying of sweat explosions <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Oh, oh, other, other one uh, at the front door. If you just, oh, yeah, just let the airflow go through. All the moths have already snuck in. Oh yes. 
<laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yes. But in the Count of Monte Cristo, yeah. when this guy's uh, granddaughter was about to marry some horrible guy, uh, and the granddaughter, the grandfather couldn't speak or talk, like, you know, couldn't talk. He was very, you know, unhealthy, but the way he, but he wanted to thwart the marriage and he was promised his granddaughter through his like eye motions that he would be able to prevent her from getting married. So then he like points them to some thing, uh, at, at a certain point, like right before they're about to send the marriage contract, they uncover this paper, which is a story about how him, him, like the crippled, the decrepit grandfather, had actually murdered this kid's father in like a duel. So then now the kid was like, I don't want to marry the daughter of my father's murderer. And it, you know, the, that backstory s saved the girl. And she was like going to kill herself because she didn't want to marry this guy so bad. So it was like pretty serious. <laughs> so the stakes were high. Um, or about a 20 even with the both of us, both bottom served my grandfather's business. Shop, top half is living quarters, and it was antiques. Two minutes of blissfully leaning on the heater, open the second door of the actual store. Can't go with the heater, heater, heat. Oh, nice, heater, yeah. Heat, heater, rather. Still with the heater, feeling the heat, yeah. A few minutes of leaning on the heater. Yeah. Easy fixes. I was immediately here with the smell of wood cleaner and sawdust, which meant to me that I was home. I read myself with a maze of tightly passed desk bureaus, tables. So to me, this feels – so I really like this really unique, great great view of her and her grandfather and the antique store. It's very beautiful. It's very unique. Um, I feel like this is where her goal needs to come from. Um, all her actions at school should somehow – Consider, and this is not necessarily, um, consider having them to relate. Maybe your grandfather needs money and she's like doing all this stuff at school and she's falling asleep in class because she's working so late. Like these types of things can really take maybe this. Maybe she just wants mm -hmm. to get home to help him with this thing because yeah. his hands are getting like. Ruby, you know, rheumatism yeah, or like, whatever, yeah. She's like, I just want to be home, whatever. Um, Lily, so then one thing will be interesting is, you know, you know, so I like that she's lying to him a little bit, right? Because nothing interesting happened. It's not true. Um, but I want to see him probe. And I hope, you know, good that she's lying a little here. Uh, why? Because she's a teenager. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, but the teenagers have their reasons, you know, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, he'll talk to the teacher. So, like, give me a little bit of access to that. Um, why? Uh, I mean, some access. Because that will tell me about her character. Is she worried about the teachers getting in trouble? That will tell me she – or is she worried about how it will affect her social standing? Mm -hmm. That could – those are two different motivations that would be two different people mm -hmm. to, to cause the same action. So clarify which one it is for the reader. Don't make me as the reader be like, well, is she – I want to tell him because she's worried about the girls getting mad or the boys attacking. Um, so those motive, whatever her motivation is for that action of that lie, will reflect about who she is as a character. Uh, give me some access to her reasons here. Yeah. Um, what's for dinner? I don't know. I guess we could order some salad. His eyes twinkling in amusement. Stuck my tongue out in disgust. My grandfather snickered. Or I mean. We could order pizza, he said, reaching for the phone. Pizza, grandfather, always pizza. Chuckled and started one of my favorite pizza places. I went to my room, opened the last door at the end of the hall next to a large window. I hurried straight to the computer, eager to get on social media, see what my friends were up to on vacation. Didn't they just get yeah. on vacation? Yeah. Kids these days. Just kidding. I think she did say some had left early, so...
Yeah, like, so if she's doing this, it's creating a feeling for the character. Does it feel like she's missing out? Does it feel like she's not accomplished what she wants to do? And then that is what the want comes from because everybody wants things. Like, you know, people, you know, you work because you want money to buy yourself a life or whatever, you know. So, like, there's a lot of different um, motivations. So the more that you can get into this character's motivations, the better. Um, so that's page 10. So what I'll go ahead and do is I might write – yeah, yeah. It was, it was a quick read. It was real good. I might write us a few um, overall notes here. I'll just do um, final boss. Final boss notes. Uh, the good. Um, it was very, like, realistic – view of high school mm -hmm. um, felt very authentic and well imagined I really love the antique shop shop and the vivid world that opened up felt much felt like the most unique part of this story I'm gonna put the dialogue. We'll see no witty. <clears throat> witty dialogue. I think it's mm -hmm. important. Yes. Um, good. Witty dialogue. I don't know if I could spell. <laughs> uh, I liked, I mean, just your general writing, writing ability, style, strong. Uh, you're constructing scene, you know, you're constructing kind of like the, the, the narrative flow really well uh, and that sort of thing. I think kind of, and this will go in my kind of notes here, uh, is like I think kind of the big areas to look at working on is just kind of the core story elements. You know, it's just saying like, hey, um, give your character a strong goal. This can help add tons of conflict. Uh, that we, the reader, can start getting a sense of uncertainty. Um, have people say no. I would also say start to, I think, you know, I think the hard to tell, but it seems like the main conflict is the main, like, plot is going to revolve around the prom and those boys. But mm -hmm. There's a lot of other just random stuff thrown in, so try mm -hmm. and, like, direct... What we should be focusing on seems like it, but I also don't know if it's going to be about the grandfather, about her relationship with Mary. I think there's also a lot of areas in which you can narrow. You know, we maybe don't need every period, like what she did in fifth mm -hmm. period and sixth period and where she walked and, like, it was good writing, but it might not be necessary. Unless they're, like, super necessary for the story. Yeah, I think that's a great, great note. But overall, great work. I think yeah. this is a really strong um, kind of entry into kind of the high school world and stuff like that. And I think you'll be able to evoke that even more by just zeroing us in on these characters' wants, their motivations, who they are. Um, because we are, and to some degree, our wants and what we're willing to sacrifice to get them. That's really storytelling, right? It's like to say, hey... Who is this person? Uh, usually if you think about someone, it's like, what do they want? What do they like? What are they passionate about? Um, and like, how do they, they do in the face of conflict? Yeah, and how do they go about getting it? And when things go, when don't go away. When there's obstacles, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was good. Great job. Great job. Um, so we're going to jump to House of Romanoff, which is a screenplay uh, from a friend of mine. Uh, it should be in here. Who's is this? This is Caleb's. What's, what's his Twitch name? Uh, he's actually like a film film friend. Mm. So from many moons ago. What's in here? Of Romanov. The 
This should be interesting. Kind of curious. It is hot as Moises in mm -hmm. here. I hate this. I liked when it was foggy, so I came out here. <laughs> like, what is this heat? I know. I even I've been this. running my fan all night and all day in my room. I know. I don't even like colds. It's horrible. I like them, y'all. <laughs> it looks horrible. This All is a TV right. show, Tyler? Yep, so we're going to go to PDF, Notepad, Edit, boom. Ooh. Look at how pretty that is. All oh, figured out. You mean that? Oh, that's right. I love me. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Act one. Alexander Palace. Yadrovsky. Evening. A gonostasis of a guild in linden wood frames. I think I'm going into German here. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's okay. An enormous painting of Abraham's sacrifice. The choir sings in the East Ring in the nave. Emperor Nicholas II faces iconostasis while holding Alexei Romanov on his hip. Alexandra. I believe, and I pray fervently for my son, but he's still unwell. Empress Alexandra, thirties, a woman in ramrod posture, sleepless eyes, kneels before a cross in the Gospels. Her bishop stands at her side, taking her confession. I must lack faith. I need more. The bishop lays his stole overhead. Depart in peace. <laughs> uh, rejoins her family, kissing Nicholas's cheek. And sets down Alexei and joins a confession queue, unless he scratches his arm through his jacket. A trepidatious preach opposes Nicholas and bows. Really Admirable humility. Emperor may skip the line. Nicholas nods and walks to the front of the queue. A parishioner in the front recognizes him and scrambles away. Alexander chuckles to herself as Nicholas starts confession. Oh, Nikki. Alexander takes a seat next to her lady in waiting, the plain and plump. Anna Vrbiodba. As the lecture leads from scripture, Alexander watches her daughters. Uh, a lot of characters. Um, a lot of character intros here. And in a... Consider how Game of Thrones did this. And I know you mentioned, uh, Caleb, that this was similar to kind of a Game of Thrones type story. Is la? Um, this was similar to a Game of Thrones type story. Um, so one of the things to keep in mind is how does this, um, uh, how did they introduce their characters? And they did it very, very carefully, right? Like they had the hook where the guy's in the forest and then, you know, then you see Ned Stark and he beheads the, the, the one guy that ran away. Uh, and then you kind of get this like slow, very conflict driven trickle into like more characters. Like mm -hmm. the first one are these guys just like riding around the forest and they just get attacked. Like it's extremely high on conflict. I mean, I don't think that's going to be the thing here, but um, usually in, in dramas, it'll be more like one or two people having a very intense argument or like mm -hmm. someone some sort of very clear, very simple argument to pick in on, get to know one character, and then you start expanding out into that character list. One of the hardest ways to pull off introducing characters is like having them all in one scene, all with some different things going on, uh, because the reader just doesn't know who to latch. Like, if you were to ask me right now who is the main character, I wouldn't know. Uh, and, like, I would guess it's probably, like, you know, whatever, whoever the Tsar is, like, Emperor Nicholas or something, or Alexei Romanov, because it's the House of Romanov. But, um, but like, you know, the introductions are all very similar, except for, like, the Empress actually has, like, a full couple of lines. But, um... I was thinking it was her. <laughs> yeah, so that's usually, you're right, that's usually the signal, is who gets the biggest intro. And right now it seems to be Empress Alexandra. Um, but, you know, there's so much 
so many people, so many dynamics going on. It's even getting a little hard to kind of keep track of like, okay, so she's sitting down, but the bishop, she was in the confessional and then left and then went to their, her seats, but then they're going somewhere else. So like those are kind of tough dynamics to mm -hmm. keep track of. And you go to Romanov 16, because it's an icon with Tatiana, Romanov 14, and all husband, both the shoes her away. Romanov lives also be subject and cousins with our husband. Marie Romanov 12 tugs on Olga's purse. Are you playing with your husband? No. Aren't you listening? You have to obey them. Ray considers Anastasia Romanov puts the wax strip on her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop involuntarily glances at Alexander, then puts his stole over Nicholas's head. Did you see that? Bishop looked at me during the session. Mama! Yes, baby. Alexi looks apologetically at her and then takes his hand off his elbow and presents his palm, moist with blood. Really, uh... <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. All right, keep your hand on it. Don't let anyone see. Main titles. Hmm. So I like this, and to me, this feels like the heart of the scene. Um. How can we heighten this? And I, and I think also like some drama with the church, you know, plus, you know, some drama with the church. Heighten this. Yeah, I would almost save like the, the daughters like chit chatting about marriage. I feel like that would be something that would come like later after the main titles. Yeah. Like in Game of Thrones is after the main titles. That's when we get like Arya, like, you know, looking at Sansa's, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever sewing they're doing and being like that's dumb she's better yeah. than me oh and the lady being like you suck at this why didn't you be more of a lady and that's like good character stuff but it's like not like the main thing so. yeah i i agree i i also would think bundle so like it, it's if you because i think what you're trying to do is kind of like this godfather type intro where everyone's at this party or at this christening, which is what it feels like, or I don't know exactly what this event was. Let me look. What was this event? Was this a christening? Mm -hmm. I think it was just church, just confession. Yeah, just confession. Mm -hmm. Um, so bundle it together. Be like the whole family is here. This person, this person, this person, this person, this person. But then the two characters that I care about are the highlighted ones, where you have a paragraph for the mom, Alexandra, and the baby, Alexi. And then that's – and then you have, you know, people mill around, and you can kind of tell, like, the group goes through confession. You don't need to give me that full play-by-play. -play. Like, the reader can kind of be like, okay, like, everyone goes through confession. But the bishop is staring at them. And then and she's like, what is he looking at? Uh, and then that's like this much more um, – you can still have this like very grandiose scene with a lot of these faces in there, but you need to start bundling it together so that the reader knows which actions to care about and which ones not to. So I feel like it's just a little bit ambiguous where I know this is important. I know the, the blood is important because that's what you end on, uh, and it's also like a more vulnerable moment. Um, so that's like, it's, the, it's really the emotional beat of the story or this scene, it feels like. And then I know something with the bishop and this like suspicion that he's like watching her. Uh, yeah, I must like faith. So like this kind of interaction, um, feels very like the heart of the scene. The, this praying for a husband thing less. Yeah, so like, it's like, Hey, can we pull that out? Like those types of things. Closer boy with a sketch pad under his arm. Gleb Botkin, 10, gets pulled through a crowd of protesters. We demand to see the Emperor now! Dr. Botkin grips Gleb's hand. Don't pay them any mind, Gleb. And we want a real parliament with real representation. The three of their pro pro protesters. That's just like red weird. Whatever. 
It's like whenever you see like a normal word, but yeah, it like yeah. feels like Oof. what the fudge. Uh, like bubble, what's a weird word? First Chiba, what's up? This is a screenplay that we're um, editing. So this is a screenplay one of my friends wrote. It's called House of Romanov. It's a TV screenplay. And we're giving it a quick review today. It's about the House of Romanov. Sort of like a Russian Game of Thrones. Um, uh, Amy and Gleb Hopkin. Captain Dredlin starts opening the gate. A palace fountain. Turn Who on. Who are you talking to? Who's Dr. Mark? He's Gleb, the little kid. I know, but who's he talking to? Is he Evgeny and Gleb Botkin? Uh, I mean, is he at the gate? I, I don't know. I guess I would put, like, that he says get to the gate. I don't know. That's, uh, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good point, actually. Um, that ordering is a little bit weird. Um, pay three. Um, verify that. Or we... Uh, exterior Alexander Palace, entrance evening. The Botkins climb stairs as liveried footmen carry furniture in and out of the Alexander's Palace. Portrait Hall. Mount Ignatius, 50, marks the floor with faint chalk. Ages place tables on their marks as maids follow behind. Ignatius whispers something to a maid as they both watch Dr. Botkin. Now the wax mustache. Okay, so... You're doing like one of the the cuts. It feels like where um, they come in in the morning. Or I guess this is in the evening, same time. And then it gets like the characters showing the scene, and then going into other people. Yeah. Nearby as they play. They're all kind of oogling as this doctor goes in. Chief Marshal Count Fredericks, and with the wax mustache, twice the width of his head. Blood passes. Blood passes on the table with silver place settings. Servants roll carts and a pile of pastries. Hello, Freddy. Actella. Count Fredericks, shaking his head. Twenty servants polishing silverware. No one to polish the goblets. We're out of practice. There's some able body do nothing. That's why I could help. Count Fredericks cranes his neck and picks up a phone. The all pushes through the eye of an icon. Of Nicholas II, the other eyes drilled out. Sergei Kep Kapsparov blows wood bits away. Captain Drillon exits the palace gate. One, you lost. Two, that's treason. I, I won't lock you up if you agree to work tonight. Party. Two kopecks. Sergei looks at the fellow. You can take your shit work and shove it right back up your... Sergei and the two other protesters hand their signs to protester one, set towards Captain Drillon. You it's coward. also confusing that he's talking to the protesters. Yeah. I'll clarify that. Um. Yeah, like Sergey is so. Sergey is one of the protesters. Mm. Is but Sergei is a protester. Sergei and two different protesters. Oh, I see. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. It's not at first clear that Sergei protester as well. And is it the same protester number one? Or a different one? Differento. Differento. And frisks Sergei. Oh, it's two kopecks. You're a disgrace, sir. The revolution should pay better. Waves the protester away and frisks Sergei. Okay, leads Dr. Botkin into the room. Olga reclines on the bench, reclining while Tatiana, Maria, and Anastasia pretend to shoot each other with toy rifles. It's a small bleed. Once he's patched, make sure he gets dressed for the party. I'm entertaining down the hall. Very good, your highness. 
as Alexander exits. Lab pulls in front of Alexei's playroom. Lab watches as Anastasia points her gun at Ogla, but Ogla ignores her. Lab raises Ogla. 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 I'm never going to name a child Olga because she'll just go by Olga. 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 Gleb raises his hand. And it's dead. Dr. Botkin pulls Gleb's arm around. You know the rules. She has to address you. But she knows me. It's not the order of things. It's the order of things. It's the order of things. <laughs> She's royal. We're not. Now sit. That Rackham points to the bench in the wall, rolls up his sleeves. Um, before Alex says, pray room. Back to the Romanov girls. Olga ignores the shots. Ooh, I see. I'm Olga. I'm 16 and I'm too old to have fun anymore. Olga takes Anastasia's rifle and thrusts it at Tatiana, who, playing along, sticks the rifle under her armpit and pretends to die. Got her! Get her, Radost! Radost, the family spaniel, starts barking wildly. Olga subdues the dog with playful scratching and starts tickling Anastasia. I don't think you need a double cap, and I would almost make that a pronoun. Well, that's a small note. Also, um, while there is conflict, it's a very light suggestion so far. Like, it's more of a sense of unease with the world as it is, right? Um, you know, there's the kid that's sick. There's kind of this protest, which is good. You know, you can build on that. Um, and I think it's enough. Uh, the question is, it's very pulled back right now it's the situation it's the world it's not the people i don't have yet an intimate view of a person and their conflict and their struggles and that type of thing so and it's tough with these bigger period pieces mm -hmm. because you want to capture the world so all your conflict is world con like you know but unfortunately that is the most standard part like the French Revolution has protesters, so anything in, in you know, Victor Hugo's world is going to have protesters. So any Les Miserables is going to have the Mariuses shouting, and, uh, and you know, it, it'll be the same with the American Revolutions and the Britain. And, like, so those global period piece con – and this is, like, one of the things period pieces struggle with is those global period piece conflicts, they don't necessarily have the personal quality that always draws me into a story. I kind of want to see the individual, the struggle. And Anastasia, we're getting that from the mom, actually. I don't think that's – Anastasia is a daughter, yeah, right? Anastasia, yeah. Alexandra is the mom. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting this personal conflict from Alexandria, Alexandra, uh, but – I'm getting so much of the other world that hers is really fading into the background. And I want to see this mother's struggle. I want to see some of her pain. I need to care about her. Uh, and, you know, this is a more – this is not like a comment I would, you know, normally give. Like normally it's like, hey, you know, especially to, to earlier writers, you're just like, hey, you got conflict, hooray. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, this is definitely more advanced work. And in that vein, you should really challenge yourself. I think to push to making that world conflict relatable sh and centering it around a character. What if I let's say it's Alexandra? If what does she think about these protesters? So if you can start framing these world level conflicts through a her eyes as a viewpoint character, and she's now you know she's someone I've related to from chapter one or from scene one because she had this son with this problem and that's me like the maternal instinct is a great way to build sympathy right with any sort of character so how can we use alexandra the person i relate to most with in this screenplay pull out some of these other 
these other faces, even though they're necessary, or at least shrink them a little bit and start giving me her view into all these things that are going on um, and making it because that'll make the world conflict feel more personal, I think. Mm. Um, we're getting, you know, and I'll try this in like some sort of articulate way. We're getting conflict at a macro level of the protesters, etc. But this is common for lots of period pieces. Um, show me the unique characters perspective earlier, i.e. Alexandra's and um, use her relatable character to give me the unique unique view on the more general world level conflicts. Um, that would just kind of be something to think about. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not bad, right? Like nothing, you know, you, it, this is really well written. Um, it's really strong. Um, but yeah, something, some food for thought. Mm. Dr. Bakken holds a bleeding forearm. The amount of blood is surprising, but Alexei used to it flip through a book of Russian fairy tales. I told you before, if you insist on sleeping with the dog, it is not okay for you to scratch the flea bites. I oh, know, I can't help it. Learn to help it. You'll be emperor someday. It takes remarkable self-restraint. At least it's not on your nose. That would have been a disaster. Alexander's West Wing Corridor Evening. So again, Dr. Bodkin. Why, why him, right? The doctor does – so the doctor doesn't have a goal, right? Or he's just working. His goal is, is smaller. I feel like the person still with the biggest goal is Alexandra. She's trying to, like, get her son to become emperor and to, like, work through this problem. So why doesn't the doctor have her deliver it to – why doesn't she have this conversation with the boy? And then he's like, you explain it to him. And then she, like, comes in and then she's like, listen – can't if you want the dog to sleep like that's you know a much more real moment and that'll be one that that gives me this like you know like it's like kind of the king speech moment where like the successor has this problem right um but they did that and they accessed that very universal and common conflict through character and through this person of of you know how relatable the king was and they, they had this amazing brilliant moment a very simple scene of him going up and trying to give a speech and just like embarrassing himself. And like, that's one of the best ways to make your character relatable is to humiliate them. Because you feel like, I mean, gosh, that's like one of the saddest moments in the King's speech is like, Oh my God. We're watching that next weekend. <laughs> um, but like he goes up on stage in front of thousands of people. And this is the very first scene. So it's not a spoiler. Yeah, I mean, I already, I assume yeah. he is able to give a wonderful speech at the end of it. Yeah, but then he just like <laughs> stutters and it's like and everyone just like goes silent and there's like thousands of people looking at him and he's like – and then when he's very mean and rude and angry, you get it. Like you're like, of course, this guy has just been so broken down. Um, so those humiliation moments can do a ton of character work. Um, so make the mom go through some of it. Um uh, I'm gonna put that as a note here because I think that's actually kind of important. Why don't we have the mom or a more relatable character um, give the kid not for scratching his flea bites? Um, okay. Western Quarter Evening. Leb stretches remarkably faithful lines of Nicholas II. He looks up and scratches the sight of something of the portrait. A tear of blood trickles out of Nicholas's eye. This gives Gleb a chill. His nose inches away from the painting. Gleb notices a dark spot. It's actually a bit of oil oozing from the cabinets. He brings up his finger to touch the oil, but the door to Alexander's room opens. Gleb jumps. Dr. Botkin. Son, you can come in now. I'm getting more gauze. 
Alexander's Palace, Nicholas's Dressing Room, Trup 50, Emperor Valet, Prime Minister Piotr is a bear of a man. It's close to the end. We are convening our summit in the Balkans. Serbia, Bulgaria, Montenegro, Greece. They're going to unite against the Turks. Good. But the Austrians are snatching our territory. I see. If we want to great Russia again, we have to send them a message. <laughs> Good. There's something else. Uh, you missed the second there. Unless that's Nicholas the first, but I don't think it is. Um, little spelling mistake. Plus character tag. Seeing the hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> fixed. Yeah, off Slapman's expected face. Oh. Oh yeah. Off what? So that means like he like we like leave with like him like. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay, Alexander's Palace, Alexi's Playroom, evening. Quite night tonight. I know. People were more into this fairy tale writing, I, I guess, know. today. Illustration of a tree with golden oh. apples. Oh, your shoulder? Oh, I just think sitting like that was, like, not so great. Ooh. 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 Like, oh, yeah. yeah I'm gonna sit like this for a second. Yeah. Oh, what a kind woman she is. Yeah. Is this comfortable for you? Yeah, that's for me. Alright. Illustration of a tree of golden apples and a boy grabbing the tall feather of a glowing bird. Bob looks over Alexa's shoulder at Ivan and the wolf. What's this one about? This is my favorite. He's like 10. Alexi? Yeah. This is my favorite. <laughs> the bird was eating the. Oh, it's you. The bird was eating the golden apples in the Tsar's yard, and the Tsar's son tried to capture it. He only got one feather. But it glowed so brightly, it would light up the room. So the father sent his son on a quest to find the bird. The boy <laughs> rode his horse night and day until he finally laid to sleep by a stream. When he woke up, he couldn't find his horse. I took a test. Alexei ignores him and goes back to the story. The, Tsar, the Tsarevich looked all over but only found a pile of bones. All there was left of his horse. Suddenly a giant wolf appeared to him and started talking to him. Closes the book and shoves it back on the shelf. Hey! Alexei dejectedly follows Dr. Bodkin but gives a wink to Gleb. Once Dr. Bodkin exits, Alexei locks the door. Alexei opens this door. Alexei! Dr. Bodkin pounds the door. Alexei pushes a coffee table up to the shelf, puts a chair on top of it, and climbs in the chair. But the book is out of reach. Gleb, put me on your shoulders. That's my friend. Put your little chin on that. Oh, there yeah, you go. He's in it, it be oh, I know. <laughs> He's got a, got a very defined chin, so it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Gleb hesitates, frightened of his father's power. Now, Gleb! Hurry! Alexi sits on Gleb's shoulder that he still can't reach, so he grabs Gleb's shoulders. Alexi's finger touches the spine of the book, pushing it further. Hurry! Alexi grasps the spine of the book with his fingertips. He yanks it out, but the two boys fall onto Gleb. But he stops when he sees Alexi. After a moment's deliberation... Gleb lets in Dr. Botkin. Help! Dr. Botkin catches his sight of Alexei and runs to him, pushing Gleb out of the way. What happened? What did you do? Okay. There we go. So to some degree, I still want to know my viewpoint character, because right now it feels like it's Dr. Botkin, because he's been in the most scenes. Need to consider having a single viewpoint character. A lot of times these viewpoint characters can guide us through this expansive world. Uh, I really think it should be the mom. Like, cause I feel like she has the most, you know, she has... Is, like, Downton Abbey doesn't have... Yeah. It's just kind of similar in some ways. Maybe, yeah. There's no, like, one person. It just goes into multiple different stories. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but... Yeah, then I would want everybody to have some pretty clear goals. Like, so, because I, and it's usually, like, got to be, like, in the first episode, maybe, like, three, maybe, is, mm -hmm. like, max, where it's, like, Dr. Botkin wants enough money to buy a car. What, like, you know, that's a bad example. And mm -hmm. then Alexei wants to just play with his friends and be a normal boy. Totally fine. Uh, Alexei's mom wants to protect him and keep him safe. And then 
smash them all together and mm-hmm. show how and make every single one of those goals at odds with each other. Um, where like ex Alexi's mom is so protective, she doesn't want him to be a normal boy and go out and play because he'll die. So then, mm-hmm. you know, now they're in conflict because she's trying to protect him and he's like doing all the silly things, you know, mm-hmm. uh, or, or just heightening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you do it well. And like, I feel like they're, these are all people acting in some sort of agency. Like they're all wanting something. Um, but I think I just, I think maybe I'm just looking for a little bit more simplicity so I can just like get it. Uh, cause I, cause I think it's kind of floating around a little bit in an mm-hmm. ethereal way and I just kind of needed to like hone in on a few people. Like, like, why did we need to have the protester that got brought in by the captain? Mm-hmm. Like, he's not shown up, and maybe he'll show up probably in, like, next page now. But, um, you know, some of these things are, but, like, now we have this big, you know, Alexandra is, again, in the forefront. So these types of things are pretty, um, yeah. Uh, again, Maria Palovna, a woman of would imperial. You, what is this would you party? It's a prelap. I don't know what a prelap is, actually. I'm going to Google. So it starts before oh. the cutaway. So then... Mm-hmm. A woman of interior dress and bearing engages a deflated glance with a companion, the wraith-like beauty, Zin- Zelinda Yusupov. There's a lot of characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an excellent idea. Your Majesty wise top of three. I'd be happy to have several maids knit dozens. I envision you personally making the clothes. As you see, would include a letter from you to the recipient. I think it would be strengthening the ties between St. Petersburg and the countryside. So Linda's lips curl. Your Highness. Is the epitome of generous. However, the sheer amount... Epitome... Epitome of generous. I have the sure amount of time to create three garments. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask you to do anything. I'm not willing to do myself. Alexander points to the half-finished garment of clashing colors with self-satisfaction. Maria bites her lips. She says, as you no doubt know, our schedules are like enormous battleships, and it takes time to alter the course. Lady in waiting, Alex, Anna Yuvrovra, enters the room looking very agitated. She whispers to Alexandra, But if your majesty will wait. Please forgive me. Uh, shall we resume at a later time? Of course. Gladly. <laughs> it's like you. Gladly. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, like these extra people, like Zindia, um, do they need to all be in the first episode? Like, I feel like your goal in the first episode is to, like, kind of just get me plugged into this world. Um, it sometimes feels like we're just trying to shove everyone that's going to be in for the entire season in. So that's a lot. But, um, I don't know. Uh, wins, at each, wins at each other. You know, she was trying to have a son. She only had... Inter- and she was trying to have one? On her right side, relieving male ebbs came from that ovary. Perfect. She did have a son. Gleb cracks the door open and sees a beastly surgical instrument strewn across the night sand. Close that door! Oh, sorry, folks. Alexander ignores Gleb. Sorry. Gleb stuffs the shame deep down. How do we see this? Um. Feel big. Nope. Yeah, just give me a visual. It's not too bad. Um, Dr. Botkin looks at Alexander's bedroom. Need a toe, full and four leg. Does it hurt, baby? <laughs> yeah. Empress, he must be moved to a hospital. 
Highness. Alexander's Palace, Nicholas dressing room. What does Alexandra think of him? Olga could marry into any family in Europe. She could be Queen of Greece, England. Why bind her to local talent? Dr. Botkin and Alexander walk into the room. The doctor opens his mouth to speak, but he stops himself seeing the Prime Minister. He glances at Alexandra. I'm less popular in St. Petersburg than anywhere else. I'm throwing a bone to the white bone. That ends. Trump tilts the shaving mirror, said Nicholas, can see Dr. Bodkin. Evgeny, one moment. Yotar. Not waiting a minute. Still pin looks surprised at the request. This way, Mr. Prime Minister. Trump leads him out. Nicholas makes sure the room is empty. Before Dr. Bodkin speak, almost whispering. A deep contusion, uncontrollable swelling. The boy must be moved to a hospital. Walks eyes with Alexandra. You do. Uh, you do understand the magnitude. Looks anxiously at Nicholas. Strictly my medical advice, state matters. I won't pretend to decide for you. As Nicholas unsheathes a cigarette, Alexander looks agitated. It's your decision, Nick. Nicholas exhales a long stream of smoke. God's will. Does the country know now that it's God's will. Before the end. Dr. Botkin crosses. Alexander stops him. God's will for you and your family to flourish. Knees dropping, Anna creeps into the door frame. I have to do what's best for the country. Besides, what inheritance entitle me, Alexei, is dead. Must be away. Do you really want Maria's boys running things? Yes, Anna. Okay. What is it? Oh. Dr. Barkin frowns, surely not. He glances at the Emperor. Alexei's shrill groan brown breaks the silence. Dr. Barkin looks pleadingly at Nicholas. We'll try it then. Then we'll try it in hospital. Passes his wife to the shoulder. Guests enter through the Corinthian colonnade. They greet Count Fredericks. Whisper something to the Count's ear. Now Fredix marks to the telephone, phone rings. Peasant's idea of luxury, a man in black. It's back to us, trims his fingernails with a boning knife. Um, Rasputin. Man in black, yes. Count Friedrich speaks in a low, deliberate voice, his mustache dancing as he speaks. Listen carefully. His Imperial Highness will curse you at the palace immediately. But use the front entrance. Palace from the south. Ring the bell twice on the back steps. Lexi squirms in pain as Dr. Botkin keeps watch and not Nicholas addresses Botkin to the crack. Doctor, get the little one to sleep until he arrives. Makes it just makes Master's displeasure. Very good. Once Nicholas leaves, the doctor begins cleaning up his station. Working bottles, etc. When medicine fails, call the wizard. Steam train. Backs into the station, passing several well dressed St. Petersburg cities. Some stare down platform where the man in black, attired in black pheasant blouse and muddy boots, stomps into the third class car. Rasputin. Thanks, good. Yeah? Ready to go! Yeah, great work. Alright, let's, let's talk about the overalls here. Because uh, I do want to keep reading. Um, but. Yeah, but it's late. Uh, unfortunately, it is late of hour. Yeah. I like I like the the one-off stuff, anyways. I do have recipes. It's pretty great. Brainwashing yeah. stuff. All right. So what was the good? That was the interesting world. The characters. Uh, story really snaps, snaps into focus. Child's fall. I wonder. Uh, actually, this might be one of my. Um, I think a similar focus could be created earlier. Um. 
honing in on characters and what's hiding their son's issues against the country and turmoil could mean. Um, what else we got? I don't know. Great dialogue. Yeah. I think the dialogue is super strong. Mm -hmm. uh, all characters are unique. Uh, I could cover the doctor's, uh, you know, dialogue tags. Things and know he was speaking. Um, well, evoke scenes, mm -hmm. world, yeah, and scenes. Yeah. So we have a lot of characters. Characters early on, consider having some come in later episodes, etc. In the first 10 pages, there has to be 15 characters. Um, that's hard to pull off, and you got pretty close to pulling it off. You got close to pulling this off, pulling this off, but I do feel like it began to make the action of the scenes, scenes unclear. Hard to know who was doing what and why. What else do we got? Um, Come on, dear. Just clarifying who the main yeah. like who. Yeah, clarify who we should. Which characters will be main a bit more earlier on and consider bundling minor characters if they all must be named? We list more. Also, um, focus more on the world. Dramas are good, i.e. the protesters, um, but I'd care more if I knew what it meant to the characters I cared about, like Alexandria. Yeah, because I, like, I mean, the world drama is great and all, but I care about what the characters I think think about it, you know? So, like, it's like, what does Alexandria think? Um, these types of things. Kids. The kids, yeah. From the... Yeah, I thought it was good. I'd watch it. Yep, I'd watch it too. It was really good. Um, I think it, I would have to get... Oh, you just got to the end and pended. What is hey. this I find, you, Jenny? Welcome, welcome. This is a... Um, there's something about intimate contact, familiar or romantic, that unnerved him, forcing tragic past to resurface. All right, I think that works. I like it. Well, you guys came in just at the very end. Yeah, you all came in at the end. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, we are we did an edit tonight. It will show up two on edits. the record two edits, so it'll show up on the recording. Um, but we are off to bed because sadly. Got work. Got work in a moment. But uh, but yeah. So if you do any screenplay writing, uh, check out the check out the review. This is uh, you know, we're pretty. Yeah, I know it's super hot in here. But we're pretty, uh, you know, kind of read through a story, talk through some of the ups and downs, what makes it work, what makes it struggle. So if you like storytelling, uh, we did a short story or a novel in the first half of the stream, and this was a really good screenplay uh, written by a friend of mine. Did you read my oh. previous comments? Oh, oh, I oh I didn't even notice. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Real quick question. I'm writing my book, of course. I've gotten to a sentence where I'm trying to explain <laughs> my prospective character is unnerved by physical contact, whether that be intimate or between family members. What's the word that would fit well for physical contact? Affectionate? 
trying to say he's only comfortable with, with purely sexual relations. Anything intimate or affectionate unnerves him. Both GF, mother and son, mm -hmm. yeah. Familial, or yeah, I think that's what works. That does work. There we go. Sorry, we were we there were in like the zone. No comments for the whole thing, so we kind of stopped checking it. Yeah, we were reading House of Romanoff with much bigger. Which was quite good. It was Look very for good. It's on the HBO. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Just uh. Starring as Alexandra. Yeah, you'll be Alexandra the Great. Alexandra. Alexandra the Great. You'll be. Uh, will be Dr. Botkin. Dr. Botkin. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I feel like this one, the big, the big takeaway really is just, I would, I would, um, um, I think the first 10 pages do struggle because I feel like the story starts when the kid is injured and then we immediately know who the you know, we know who the main characters are because they're the people who care most about the outcome, which is the doctor, the father, and the mother, which is you know, Alexandra and, and, and Nicholas. Um, so that – I feel like I would take those three characters and make them the main characters going I back. I think the father's not really going to be the main I think it's going to be the mother probably. Yeah, and maybe the son and, like the, son and, the, and son. the kids. You know, like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that in that case, then I would just start framing that. There's so many characters, like so many named characters. Um, the people who don't matter, just bundle them together. Um, help me focus on the people that matter, I would say. Um, because there is conflict in the early scenes, and it's there, and it works. Um, but I feel like you're you're trying to evoke this massive world. But remember that those big, massive period pieces world – they feel the same, and it's not a bad feeling because that's what people show up to those movies for. It's just like you know the country's intention. Who know? But like um, the thing that makes that country's intention thing unique is really the characters that experience the country's intention. So like if you think about Game of Thrones, we only cared about Westeros's tensions because Ned Stark was friends with John Aaron before he was assassinated. So those types of things make the the tipping points that make the country fall have the personal stakes, make them feel unique. Um, so the protesters thing, I would say, did not feel fully unique yet because I didn't have a unique character that I cared about that could contextualize it for me. And that's why I think bringing those main characters to light earlier would be really, really valuable. Anyways, that's kind of my uh, biggest note. Uh, and, and other than that, I think this was really fantastic work, and I'm probably going to read the rest of it mm -hmm. uh, in my own time because it's very good. Yeah. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Take care, y'all. Bye. Have a good one. Turtle flirp a derp. Turtle flirp a derp, am I right? Okay. <laughs>